every streamer wants their stream to look crystal clear without any lag. The only problem is the settings are super complicated and hard to understand for normal people. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna reveal to you the best stream settings to use in OBS Studio that turned my stream from being a laggy PowerPoint presentation that had me looking like a Minecraft character to a nice, smooth, crystal clear professional stream. And the reason why most people don't get their streams to look this nice is because they don't know the exact settings to use. So whether this is your first time in OBS Studio or you've been streaming for a while, these settings will apply to anyone who wants the best video quality for their streams. First thing we need to do is open up OBS Studio, duh, it's in the title. If you're wondering where I got this dope starting soon graphic, it's actually my streamer starter pack, which is in the description below. But we wanna go to the settings in the bottom right corner, so click on settings. And then we're gonna actually skip general and appearance because it doesn't really matter. We're gonna go straight to stream. Then from here, we're going to connect our Twitch account or whatever thing you're using here. So in this case, I have my Twitch account connected with this button. And a cool thing about connecting your Twitch channel this way is that if you hit OK, go to the Docs tab, and now you can add your Twitch chat, your stream info, your Twitch stats, and your activity feed all in the doc here. So if you click on Twitch chat, it'll automatically pop it here. So you can automatically just see it in OBS Studio. Isn't that cool? But let's go back to the settings in the bottom right corner, click settings. Then we'll go back to stream. And then we're gonna want to uncheck enable enhanced broadcasting because it's going to allow us to change more settings. Then once you've done that, make sure to check ignore streaming service setting recommendations because that way it'll use what we tell it to instead of what this tells it to instead, which will make more sense in just a second. So then hit apply. And then we're gonna move to the scariest part, which is the output tab, but don't freak out. I got you guys. Go to the top where it says output mode and change it from simple to advanced, which I know is counterproductive to people wanting to keep it simple, but trust me. Then we'll make sure we're on the streaming tab and then we'll make sure that the audio track is on one. And so any audio that we say is on track one will be sent to our stream. Then for our audio encoder, keep it at FMM. The Twitch VOD track is actually a very useful setting, which will allow you to play copyrighted music on your Twitch streams without getting the little warnings or your VODs muted after. But I'm going to touch on this setting at the very end of the video, so make sure to stick around for it because you don't want your channel getting in trouble. For the video encoder, if you're using a NVIDIA graphics card, you're going to want to use NVIDIA NVEC H264. And if you don't have this and you're using AMD, you're going to want to use whatever the AMD equivalent is. And if you don't have either of those, then you're going to want to use X264. But that's going to use a lot of resources on your computer, which might run into issues. The next important setting is we'll go to the encoder settings. We're going to change rate control to CBR, and we're going to change the bit rate to 8,000. We used to have it on 6,000, which is also a very good bit rate. But sometimes when you're streaming, if there's extra resources available, it will boost it up to 8,000, which will give you even better quality if you're a regular Twitch streamer or a Twitch affiliate. However, if you're a partner, then you'll almost always get the 8,000 kilobits per second quality. But don't put it any higher than 8,000 because then you will actually nuke your stream. So don't do that. Next, we're going to change the keyframe interval to two. Others like to have it on zero. Either is really fine, but I prefer two. The preset, you want to have anywhere between P5 and P7. I'm just going to have it on P6. If you have a really good computer, put it at P7. If you have a not so great computer, do P5. Somewhere in between, P6. Then we're going to do high quality, two passes, high, enable psycho visual tuning, GPU zero, and max B frames two, which is pretty standard. Then we're going to click on the audio portion, a little two tabs in. We're going to change all of these audio bit rates to 320 to give us the best audio quality as well. So now after doing these specific settings, this is going to give you a good quality, but we still need to do a couple more things to make sure it's the best quality. So we're going to go to the audio tab and make sure that you have your correct desktop audio selected. This is going to be wherever your computer speakers are. So in this case, I'm using the Yamaha ZG-01, which is holding all of my computer audio. So we have that. And then for your mic, simply pick your microphone from the list. I'm using the Rode Pod mic USB. Love this bad boy. Also linked in the description below. Then we'll hit apply and then we'll move to the video tab. Now this part's a little complicated, so pay attention. For the base canvas resolution, you're going to want to pick whatever you're gaming at. I'm gaming at 1080p and I'm also on a 1080p monitor, so I'm going to choose the 1080p option. Now I'm also wanting to stream at 1080p 60 frames per second. So that means my output resolution is also going to be 1080. If these are different, it's going to make you pick a downscale filter in which you're going to want to pick Lanscos because it'll give you the best quality. But since these are the same, I don't need one. Then since we want to stream at 1080p 60 frames per second, we're going to change our common FPS value to 60. So that way we have 1080p 60 frames per second. Makes sense, right? Then obviously hit apply. And if this has been helpful so far, drop a quick like on the video because it's gonna help other people find more of these videos. And then we can skip hotkeys and accessibility because they're just gonna waste your time really. And we can jump straight to advanced where the only thing that you really need to consider here 
is the automatically reconnect. Make sure this is enabled because if your stream disconnects, you'll retry a couple times to keep the stream going. And then this is an optional setting, but can be really useful. So right under network, there's an option that says dynamically change bitrate to manage congestion. Essentially, if you have other people on your network, like your Wi-Fi, and they're like streaming at 4K and just like the amount of internet kind of goes up and down, you might want to enable this because if you are streaming at high quality and you don't have enough resources from your internet because other people are hogging it all up, this will lower the quality of your stream instead of making you buffer and stutter like this. So if you want, you can do that. But if that's not a problem for you, you can leave it off. So it's up to you. Then you can hit apply. OK. And now you got a crystal clear stream. But if you're streaming on Twitch, you're definitely going to want to take advantage of this Twitch VOD track feature right here. And you're going to want to watch this video to the side of me where I explain it all in full detail. So give that video a watch. My name's Cody, and I'll see you in the next one.